Hey guys, this is Jeff at Jeff's Jet Boat, and today we're going to be checking our engine compression, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Ah, give you a little background on me. Uh, ASC Master Tech. Uh, I worked for Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda at a power sports dealership. I've been a service technician, a service advisor. I've done everything. I used to stunt ride. I used to road race. I raced dirt bikes for the longest time. I am in my late 30s. I've been working on cars to drag race. I've been working on cars and engines from everything from hybrids to tow trucks, gas, four stroke, two stroke, everything in between. So I know what I'm doing. This isn't my first rodeo, but this is my advice to everyone. Do multiple engines. I've done, I've done a ton of motor repairs. Obviously, I'm not trying to give you my credentials, but I want you to know that this ain't just I just didn't watch a YouTube video on how to do this and then I'm redoing it so that I can get views and all that stuff and don't have a clue on how this works. Um, so my background is automotive, went to ICC for automotive science and, um, and that's it. So what do we need? We need a compression tester. This one's Mark Blue. That's for my handy dandy two stroke. As you can see all the engines I've done over the years just on my own. Next, this is a Matco compression tester, okay? Um, wasn't cheap. I can tell you if you go to Harbor Freight and buy one, you're wasting your time. I'm not knocking shit on Harbor Freight. I buy stuff, but diagnostic and testing equipment, I do not. Um, you wanna buy a nice one. This is a Matco, Snap-on, um, OEM Tools makes a really nice one. And they're a little expensive, but they're awesome. I mean, if you're the type of person that does your own, motor, your own repair, this works great. You get a kit, two stroke, four stroke. You know, there's about five different options for spark plugs and this pretty much has them all. Even on the uh, uh, Ford Triton motor adapter right there as well. So we're gonna get this hooked up. I'm gonna show you what all these numbers mean. We're gonna go over it. And, uh, and uh, it's very simple. It's very easy to do. There's nothing to it. So let's get started, guys. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to loosen up these screws. We gotta take these and slide these things off to remove the air filter box. They're in the back too as well. So, now that we have that done, we need to pull the air filter out. Obviously while we have the air filter out, we should take a look at it. Hey, it looks nice like an air filter. So next thing we need to do is we need to remove the four coils. And to do that, we gotta remove these 10 millimeter bolts and we have to unplug the coils. Okay, so we're gonna grab our 10 and we're gonna break, we're just gonna break them free. Do not ever, ever use an impact on the coils or on a spark plug. The vibration will probably damage the windings inside the coil. And then once you break them free, you should be able to just twist them out by hand like this. One cup holder. Four. So now that you got those out, pull your connectors off. Now, another thing, these connectors, you're not gonna be able to get them mixed up. They are length. I mean, you could take this farthest one and put it here, but this is very simple. So just take note, they're gonna lay, they're gonna lay on here right to where they plug in at. So it's very simple. Now, why do we wanna disconnect these? As we're cranking this engine, we do not want these ignition coils to fire because they'll try to short to ground and you can ruin them internally. Okay, and then we're also gonna keep all this stuff um, and put them back in the same hole that they're at, okay? And there we go. Now, when you pull these out, you wanna look at the tips. See if there's any oil around here. If there's oil, that means this valve cover gasket has got a leak and it's leaking into the spark plug cavity. What will happen is the oil will short out the spark plug and you can get a misfire. This is very common on any vehicle that's an overhead can, Honda Civics, anything. Valve cover gasket can leak and you'll have oil down in there. So you wanna visually take a look, make sure it's nice and dry. 
which these are. Next, you need compressed air. Either if you don't have a compressor, buy the stuff for cleaning computers and you want to. You want to blow those holes out. You don't want crap in it. This ain't a small block. This ain't your dad's boat. You got to get all that cleaned out of there. You need a 5.8 socket. I highly recommend getting a swivel socket. It makes life easy. 5.8 extension. Throw it down in there. Long extension. I think that's a six inch extension. That is what you want. And that's it. Break it free. They're not head bolts, they're spark plugs. They don't have to be cranked down. And this spark plug is going to tell you everything you need to know about your motor. Absolutely everything. So see that? Oh, it's going to be hard. I'm going to get on the camera here and see if I can help you. I'm just going to try to focus on it. A chocolatey brown electrode. And it's going to be hard. And I apologize. But not this tip inside there on the porcelain. You want that to look like chocolate brown? That means a good burn. This thing looks like it's burning just fine. And again, I'm going to store these plugs and coils somewhere where I can keep track so they all go back the same way. Okay, so now that we got that, we're gonna just, cause I'm outside here, and if my luck a leaf will blow in there or a stink bug will go in there. I'm just gonna put some covers over this. And now we need to do the next thing, which is we need to disable. Next thing we need to do is we need to disable the fuel system so it won't fire the injectors. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Fuel system disabled. Okay, so we got everything ready to go. Fuel system is disabled. We're not gonna shoot fuel in. Ignition is disabled, so we're not arcing the coils on anything. So now that we got the spark plugs out, we've got to have um, a way to hook up our PSI gauge, our gauge to, this, to the actual cylinder. So on the MR1 engines, this is a 10 millimeter spark plug. So you need a 10 millimeter spark plug um, adapter. It's got a little O-ring on it. It's just gonna thread down in there. So let's get that threaded down in there. All right, so now, we just hook it up to our hose. There we go. The remaining cylinder, the remaining spark plugs is out. And we're getting ready to crank it over. So, uh, two things. There's different ways to do compression tests based on the engine. Two-stroke motors. Two-stroke motors, you hold the throttle wide open, you crank them, you kick them, whatever your starting mechanism is hard as you can. You got to crank it like it owes you money. Kick it like it owes you money. Four strokes, same thing. If you have a weak battery, you will get, you will not get accurate results. So you got to make sure your battery is, you got a normal charged up battery and it's not sluggish. Um, we're going to keep the throttle closed for this one. So on a four stroke, on these motors, these motors are got their fuel injected, number one. The motor fires up under no throttle, okay? So the motor's cold, the throttle is closed and we're gonna crank and crank and crank. We're gonna make sure we have good battery. So we're gonna do that on all four cylinders and we're gonna compare our numbers. So here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna crank the engine over. I got my helper, Allie, my daughter. She's gonna crank this over and we're gonna watch this gauge, okay? And I'm gonna try to get this so that it is zoomed on there like that. Go for it. Don't 
stop. Alrighty, there you go. Yeah, about a hundred and yeah, about a hundred and eighty. Okay, so as you can see, we had to crank and crank, 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 crank until it stopped. So we're gonna do this on all all the cylinders and see what our measurement is. Now, hundred and like hundred and fifty is about the low side of things. Okay, so we'll get the measurements and then we'll go over everything. Okay, one uh, another thing. If you have two batteries, set them on both. That way you get maximum cranking power. All righty, cylinder number two, let's go. Hit it, babe. Thank you. All right, there you go. Just shy of 180. So now we're going to move it from this cylinder over to this cylinder. There we go. All right, Allie, again. All right. That one was over 180. Now. We'll go back to this one that we tested that was kind of lower. Let's get a look-see. Let's try it one more time. See if we get another result. So we're gonna screw this in. Hit it, Allie. All right. Good. So there you go. So now why'd that come up a little bit? Why was that one higher? Well, we're gonna go over that in just a moment. All right, Allie, tell everybody hello. Hi. You gotta have extra help, that's for sure. All right, so we're gonna go over these numbers. Okay, so we're done with everything. Um, we've pretty much established that we had 180 in cylinder one, and the third one, and the fourth one. Uh, that second cylinder that we tested um, was below 180 when we first tested it. Of course, we went back and tested it and the number came up. Well, there's a couple reason why, couple reasons why that has happened. Number one, the piston going up and down in the cylinder uh, has, just from us cranking it over, put enough heat into that cylinder to seal that motor up just a little bit better. So I would assume that the rings um, had just sealed the engine up and that's what gave that dif difference in PSI. The engine had been, we have, you know, of course we cranked it four other times. Um, so that's where you get these variances. Now again, with the, uh, the using a quality compression tool, if you use a Harbor Freight one, you will get very, very inconsistent results. That's why I don't recommend you using it because you're trying to see the health of the engine. So you, it doesn't have to be exactly each cylinder the same, but you wanna see roughly the same number. Of course, the manual's gonna say within X amount of percent and go off of that. So for my boat, my engine, my engine's doing great. I tested my motor while it was cold. If you test the motor while it is warm, you will probably get a different result. The number will honestly probably be a little bit higher maybe. Could be the same. Um, uh, the point is you're wanting to test when it's cold because that's how the engine is getting started. You need it, like I said, you need around 150 PSI for the thing to fire up. So, you watch this video, you did the test at home, you have low compression. 
Why is that? Multiple reasons. Uh, probably the most common is probably a buildup of carbon on your exhaust valve uh, that's not sealing the motor up. That's typically where this starts at, is on the exhaust valve side of things. Uh, intake valves, usually not an issue because as the injector fires, the gasoline goes over the intake valve, kind of cleans all that stuff off because it's like a solvent, all the carbon off. So the intake valves are usually typically clean. Exhaust valve, buildup of carbon, it's typically where that is. The valve seat, gets smashed into the uh, cylinder, that causes an issue. Um, back when we used to have to shim our valves, um, you know, it could be out of spec, it has to be adjusted. That's not on this motor. Um, most unlikely is your piston rings are worn. And um, on these motors, that's usually not the case, unless the oil never got changed. Unless, and if the oil never got changed, you're probably gonna have issues all over the place. But, um, and then last, and of course another common, is a head gasket. A head gasket leak can cause low compression. You can have a head gasket that's torn in between a couple cylinders. Um, so it's not always worst case grenade situation. You could have low compression and it could be a head gasket. Head gasket, I mean, I know it looks complicated, but a head gasket on that motor is nothing to really do. Um, and is actually inexpensive because you're just buying a gasket, whatever seals you gotta replace to get to it. So, so with my motor, very happy. I do this every year. I do this at the end of the season to try to assess how the health of the engine is. Of course, we surf behind our boat, we wakeboard, scream this thing when we're surfing at 9,000 RPMs. Um, and so it's just nice to know these, this information. If you buy a boat, if you buy a boat from a dealer, you'll get these compression values. Um, again, if they test the motor with a junk compression gauge, you might get low readings. If they test it um, in the freaking dead of winter, you're gonna get a low reading. So if you go to buy a boat, you're buying it in the winter time and the thing's out there and the motor is super cold, I'm talking like like it's, it's 30 degrees out, 40 degrees out, you're gonna have a low reading. You know, ambient temperature is kind of relative in this situation, might be a little bit low, but um, but again, that's kind of where we're at. What else? Again, be careful, spark plugs, clean out the hole. You don't wanna get debris down in there. You wanna make sure you disable your systems. And that's it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, shoot them down in the comment box. Please like, please like the videos, it helps me out. Um, and I hope you guys just really enjoy all this stuff. I enjoy doing these videos. This is a hobby of mine. I really do enjoy it. So, so thank you for watching the video. Um, everybody take care, be safe, enjoy these boats, enjoy boating, and don't spend all your time working on these boats. They're pretty bulletproof. Take care, bye.